Okay, let us look at the pseudo code now for bubble sort. Um, so let us say the input array is index 0 to n minus 1. So I said we'll represent the iterations using number citations starting from 0, 1, 2, 3. So iteration 0 is a really our first iteration and then the iteration 1 is the second iteration. So you look at the worst case scenario example that we saw here. You had 6 elements and the iteration numbers go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So for array of 6 elements you will have 5 iterations. So in general for an array of n elements you will have to go through n minus 1 iterations at your worst case. And you see the um, iteration numbers, it is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So iteration 4 is the iteration number for the last iteration. And this array had elements from 0 through 5. So, you know, with array indexing and numbering, so if there are n elements, we say the array index runs from 0 to n minus 1, which is 5 in this case. So 4 is n minus 2. So if you have 6 elements, the array index go from 0 to 5, which is n minus 1, and the iteration numbers of bubble sort go from 0 to n minus 2. Okay? And that's what uh, is here in the pseudo code for i equals 0 to n minus 2. So the loop index i will correspond to the iteration number. Uh, then in each iteration, what we do? We do the pairwise comparisons and check uh, if the left side element is le get, le greater than the right side element. If the left element is greater than the right element, we do the swap. If the left element is less than or equal to the right element, we do not do the swap. And I said as part of optimization, if we did not need to do any pair uh, sorting for uh, in an iteration, that means the unsorted portion that we are working with is already sorted. So we can stop the entire algorithm right there and say the entire array is sorted. So in order to do the optimization, we just need to make use of or use uh, additional memory which is this uh, boolean variable to check if we did any swapping or not in a particular iteration. We, so we after we get inside an iteration, we initialize this boolean variable did swap to false. And if we had to really swap in, a, in that particular iteration, we set it to true and then uh, after done with all the pairwise comparisons for the iteration, we can come out and check if we did any swapping or not. So let us see the details. So we run the inner loop, the J loop to do all the pairwise comparisons. So I run the inner loop from J equals 0 to what is called N minus I minus 2. So you see we start all the iterations from the left most index which is index 0 and go up to uh, what is called n minus um, okay so let us work it, work it out so if i equals 0 if I substitute here it is n minus 0 minus 2 so n minus 0 minus 2 is n minus 2 so the j loop for iteration 0 will run from 0 to n minus 2 so that means if n is 6, n minus 2 is 4. So the j loop for iteration 0 will run from uh, j equals 0 to j equals 4. And what you do? For any j, we compare it to its right. So if j is index 0, we compare it with j plus 1, which is index 1. If 78 is greater than 72 or not. If 78 is greater than 72, we do the swapping and put 72 here and 78 comes here. And then move on our j. So j is 1, j plus 1 is 2. So 78 is here compared to 59, 78 greater than 59, so swap. 59 comes here, 78 goes here. 78 compared to 45, again swap. 45 comes here, 78 goes here. 78 to 23 greater, so swap 23 and 78 goes here. 78 compared with 12, 12 comes here, 78 goes here. So in a particular iteration, what we do, we compare element at A of J with the element at A of J plus 1. If A of J, the left element, is greater than the right element, that's what I said previously, 
then we do the swapping of the two elements at index a of j and a of j plus 1. And since we did the swapping, we set this boolean now to true. And just run, continue the subsequent pairwise comparisons, move on or j index. So once we are done with the j loop, we come outside the j loop, we are still within the i loop for the particular iteration. We check if we did any swapping. So if did swap is false, that means we did not do any swapping inside the j loop. So the j loop runs basically over the unsorted portion. Okay. So like I said for index 0, the j loop will run from 0 to n minus 0 minus 2, which is n minus 2. So why we do that? Because uh, we have to be able to compare it to, to its right. So we don't go all the way to n minus 1. We just go to up to n minus 2 so that when j is n minus 2 we can compare it with j plus 1 which is n minus 1 so we can compare this element here which is 78 by then with 12 so we can compare it to its right so when i is 1 j will run from 0 to n minus i minus 2 which is 6 minus 1 minus 2 that is 3 so that's why the j loop will run up to index 3. So we will be comparing 72 with 59. 50, 72 is greater than 59. So we do the swapping. 59 comes here. 72 comes here. 72 is 45. Again, 72 is greater than 45. So 45 comes here. 72 comes here. 72 is 23. Uh, 72 is again greater than 23. So 23 comes here. 72 comes here. 72 is 12. 72 greater than 12, so 12 comes here, 72 goes here, to this final position. So we run the j loop only until 3, and then compare it to its right, and that's the last comparison for the titration. Okay, so is this pseudocode clear related to the algorithm? Any questions? Alright, so now let us do the best case and worst case for the actual math for the time complexity. So as I said before, the best case is if the array is already sorted. And that is in the case here, one iteration, right? Because we have to still do all the pairwise comparisons and then for, the, uh, for that iteration. And if we did not go through any sorting, of the paro and the pairwise comparisons that we do in the unsorted portion, then that unsorted portion is sorted. And uh, if we accomplish this in iteration 0 itself, that means the input array is already sorted in the increasing order. Uh, so that means we run the j loop once and that is when i equals 0 so that's what i indicate here so when i equals 0 that is the first iteration we run the j loop for all the comparisons that is needed so that is from 0 to n minus 2 for j so this is like writing the summation so for a particular index i so there's no summation for the i index i but there is a summation for index j because we have it running in a loop so we can say sigma j equals j equals 0 to n minus 2 and what we do inside the j loop we do this comparison a of j a of j plus 1 that is a basic operation so we do one comparison inside the j loop and this is a summation that we are going to have for the best case. j equals 0 to n minus 2, 1. Indicating one comparison. So again, what formula we could use? This is lower limit, upper limit. And just a constant inside summation. So we can say this is n minus 2 minus 0 plus 1 upper limit minus lower limit plus 1 so that is going to be simply n minus 1 so that's the number of comparisons we do for the best case okay and uh, we can discuss the lower order terms here also and say this is simply n comparisons in asymptotic 
sense as n increases. You could leave it as it is, but you could simplify it further uh, uh, because anyway, when we use a big O notation or theta notation, we have to simplify things uh, to just the most dominating term. So this is the best case. Now, what about the worst case number of comparisons? So there we have a little more involved math. So the best case, so the worst case is if we have to do uh, swapping for every pairwise comparison we do, because the uh, if if we don't do any pairwise comparisons, uh, then the array is sorted, right? So that means if the array is reverse sorted and we have sort sorted in the forwarding order as we saw in the example here, for every comparison we do, we will end up doing so the swapping. So that's the worst case if the array is reverse sorted and then you have to go through all the possible iterations so that means i the iteration number will run from 0 to n minus 2 and for each value of the iteration number i we have to run the j loop from 0 to n minus i minus 2 and that's what is captured in the summation for sigma i equals 0 to n minus 2 j equals 0 to n minus i minus 2 and what we do inside each summation is just a comparison a of j with a of j plus 1. So that's one comparison. So again we saw a similar double summation earlier today. So again we'll focus, we'll fix the, keep the i summation as it is and try to solve the innermost summation which is the j summation. So j runs from 0 to n minus i minus 2 and the key thing is what is inside the inner summation it's a 1, it's a constant. So again our upper limit minus lower limit formula can be applied so it's going to be n minus i minus 2 minus 0 plus 1. So if you simplify it it's going to be n minus i minus 1 which is kind of this n minus 1 minus i from 0 to n minus 2 for i. And we just now did solve the summation if you have something like this we can expand the summation by substituting the different values of i so if i is 0 it's going to be n minus 1 minus 0 to n minus 1 plus n minus 1 minus 1 is n minus 2 and goes up to n minus 2 for i so n minus 1 minus n minus 2 is simply going to be 1 and this we saw to be n times n minus 1 over 2 n square so the best case is n minus 1 or n comparisons and then worst cases this n this is the exact number n minus 1 is also the exact number here this is approximately so n square comparisons so since the best case is different from worst case we have to just use the asymptotic time co uh, complexity notation big O and write inside it the worst case which is n square Okay, so any question on this? I have a question. Dr. Yes, go ahead. Uh, it's about the pseudocode. I'm trying to figure out what edge case or what is the first for loop trying to do there? The first for loop, the i loop is just to keep track of the iteration, the iteration number. Uh, so, as I said, the iteration numbers are starting from zero. So, when you look at this worst case example, for an array of 6 elements from 0 to 5, the iteration numbers go from 0 to 4. That means n equals 6 here, 6 elements. And the iteration number uh, at the end is 4. That means you go from iteration number 0 to n minus 2. That's why I have written here the outer for loop going from i equals 0 to n minus 2. And I, again, that decides how many iterations you do. And then inside each iteration, we do the pairwise comparisons from left to right. Again, we do this only in the unsorted portion. So the unsorted portion, the range for the unsorted portion for any particular iteration i ranges from 0 to n minus i minus uh, actually 1. But since we have to compare a of j, j, j plus 1, we stop j equals n minus i minus 2 so that we can compare that to the last element in the unsorted portion which is going to be at index j plus 1. Is that clear? Yeah, that's clear. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, any other question? Okay, so let me save this video.